Shalom, coming in the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone and to the hopeful elect pushing his word in truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. Um, this lesson is going to be titled White as Wool. Uh, I was watching a, a lesson that Apostle Tahar was doing based off um, Vocab No Class Malone or Vocab, vocab the Timonite. Uh, you know, he was going in into this, uh, going, basically going into the color of, you know, our, our Lord and our Savior and his father right, and the people of Israel, right? And he was trying to debunk and say that, you know, this, these scriptures are not saying that they were black. They're saying as a metaphor as, or sorry, slack, not black, um, so-called black, right? They're using it as a metaphor, right? And I was just listening. I was like, yo, this is crazy that, you know, he's, he's a bug out. <laughs> he's a bug out. Like you can't. He's just a bug out. Like Apostle Tahar said, he's a, he's a stumbling block. Because he... It's funny watching people walk into a, a ditch, right? They're blind and they walk into a ditch. And you tell them that they're in a ditch. But they tell you, no, I'm not in a ditch. I didn't fall into a ditch. You know, my legs are not broken. Even though you see the blood coming out of their legs, the bones sticking out. But they're like, no, my legs are not broken. He's like, oh, okay, whatever you say, man. Whatever you say. You know, you can just leave him alone. That's what it looked like <laughs> with uh, vocab, the Timonite, and any person you deal with when you tell them the truth and they just, you know, they just don't listen. And they just watch them fall and you're just like, wow. And you still tell them that they fell and they're not listening. Right? So Revelation 1 and 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool. Okay. Right there, it says his hairs, it says his head and his hairs were white like wool, right? So it's saying the hairs on his head were like like uh, white like wool, right? As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, right? So vocab was saying because it says his head and his hairs were white like wool, they're saying that he's a so-called white man, right? Right? Which is just nonsense, right? Now, if you read this, if you don't really have this, if the spirit's not dealing with you, then you're going to think that because it says his head and his hairs are like white, white like wool. First of all, it says it's white like wool. What nation on the planet has woolly hair? Not the so-called uh, uh, white man. He doesn't have white woolly hair. He has long, strong, uh, long, not strong, slack, long, straight hair, right? Thin hair. There's nothing woolly about his hair. So how could it be him? Right, and you have a brain. You know, if someone has, if, like, you know, when you're up in age, through either it's through stress or through wisdom, your hair turns white. You know, right? But this isn't not a so-called white man is not going to get stressed out or age, and then his hair all of a sudden turns woolly. <laughs> That's not how it works, right? And in verse fifteen, and his feet, like unto fine brass. So therefore, it just cuts that. Cuts up the front, like this kind of like filters and corrects any uh uh what's the word looking for miscommunication or uh confusion from the first uh the verse 14 because it says and his feet like unto fine brass. So I have this um there you go. All right, I just searched and this came up for brass, burned burn brass. So this is what brass looks like. You see on the left, it's kind of like almost goldish, it's brownish gold, like amber. And then when you put it in a furnace, this is what it comes out. Brown. Right? Like dark brown. Right? And it even has a scripture. And his head and his hairs were white like wool. And it has a picture. His head and his hair. So it's referring to all the hairs on his head. Right? His head. Not just the top of his head, but his whole head. So including his face. Were all white like wool. Right? And in verse 14, and his head and his feet. Like onto his fine, onto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, right? So you can see the difference. So what other nation on the planet, uh, you know? First of all, if you've seen so-called black people, when it's like the winter, if living, especially if you're living into like uh, living in a cold climate, like myself, I live in Canada. During the winter months, our skin's a lot lighter because we're not getting the sun, right? We're kind of we actually look like the brass color. I know I do, right? But as soon as 
summer comes around, I'm out more, my skin is dark now. It looks exactly like the burnt brass. Right? But vocab was trying to use that as a, a metaphor. That is not necessarily what it means. But, right, and you see in this, the, the verse right here, it says his head and his hairs were white. Like, well, he was trying to say that means he's a so-called white man. But then it, you, like, and then it says right here and in verse 15, and his feet like unto fine brass, right? As if they burn in the furnace. So you just saw the color of that. That's the so-called black man. So that's confusion right there, vocab, right? And Most High says... Let me just get that. Because I want to read it. Oh. I noticed the blue letter is not picking up stuff anymore. It's almost like they changed the algorithm or something. <sighs> okay, hold on. I think it's Corinthians. Author. You know what? Let me just check real quick. Because I want to get this author of confusion. Trying to make sure I got the right one. There, see? 1 Corinthians 14, 33. For Yahweh is not the author of confusion. So, what vocab is trying to say is confusion. And obviously, he's a stumbling block, right? That's who he's set up to be. You can't have someone with so-called a white head and then have brown feet. Like Apostle Zahar said, that means he's suffering from leprosy, right? And Yahweh Shai is not going to come back with a sickness of leprosy. That doesn't make any sense, right? Now, right here, people will say, well, it's saying two things. That doesn't make any sense. Even though the verse 15 cuts up verse 14 and it puts it in correct order for you to understand it. Okay. Let's say you don't get it still. Let's go to Daniel 7 and 9. Daniel 7 and 9. I behold, slack, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit, which is Yahweh, whose garment was white as snow. So when it says white as snow, it's not saying, vocab was trying to say, oh, it's the texture. That's what it's referring to when it says snow. That doesn't make any sense, right? It didn't say his garment felt like snow, right? Right? Back in, you can see in the other verse, it's talking about the wool, Let's see if I can pull it up here. Um, right here it says his head and his hairs were white like wool. So a wool is already white, right? And wool has a specific feature, right? It's curly. Why didn't he just say, um, you know, white like leprosy, you know? Right? Why didn't he say that? Right? He's, he's also describing the, the texture of it. That's why he used wool. And also wool is white. Right? Or so-called white. Well, it's white. Slack. It is white. White is the, the color. You always use that when you talk about the so-called white man. But right back here it says, whose garment was white as snow. Right? It's talking about the color of the garment, not the texture. And the hair of his head, like the pure wool. So there you go. It even cuts it up. It even gives you the description of the, the texture of his hair. It says, and the hair of his head, like the pure wool. And if you felt wool, you know what that feels like, okay? His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire, right? That's why you're supposed to use, like uh, Apostle Tahar was saying in the lesson, I'll just pull it right here, right there, Isaiah 28, 28 and 10, precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. You're supposed to bracket up with another precept, right? Because not everything's uh, like straightforward. You got to link it. That's why you have to be spiritual, right? Only if you're spiritual, if the Spirit's dealing with you, you'll be able to link scriptures together where it all makes sense. Because remember, this is a code, and it's only for Israel. Only Israel can crack the code because the Most High is dealing with, with them specifically. And more importantly, he's dealing with the elect. They're the only ones that get that spirit, right, to have the codex, which is through the Spirit, to crack the code of the scriptures, right? By using uh, precept upon precept, line upon line. So this cuts up what Vocab was talking about in that video, which is funny. But he can't see it. Maybe he's even read the scripture. Who knows? But he can't connect the dots. Because he's not hes not part of the elect. He's not part of the hopeful elect. Slack, right? He's not an Israelite. As of, far, as of right now, he's not an Israelite. You know? That's why they call him a Timonite. Because apparently his dad is a German. Right? So that cuts up everything. But let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, 
Daniel 10 and 6. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass. Right? And the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. So right there, the point is the polished brass. What color is brass? <laughs> what color is brass? We have it right here. Brown. Right? Brown, just like the, the Jake in the, the picture. Like, I don't know. It is funny because like when in the the video, Apostle Tahar had a, a vocab talking to the other Edomite. It says watching him read the scripture and trying to uh, uh, explain that it doesn't mean that. Like, it's just like it's crazy to watch someone do that. It's just like you are a bugger, man. You're you're holy. Wow. The most I can do anything. It just increases your faith watching that. Like, this is not meant for you. That's why you can't break it down. All right? So, Ezekiel 1 and 7. Now, it's talking about... Um, hold on. It's luck. I believe... Hold on. Let's read up from the beginning. Ezekiel 1 and 1. Now, it came to pass in the 13th year, in the 4th month, in the 5th day of the month... As I was among the captives by the river of Shabar, that the heavens were open, and I saw visions of Yahweh. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Joachim's, I believe I'm pronouncing it right, captivity, the word of the Lord Yahweh came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Shabar. And the hand of the Lord Yahweh was there upon him. So Mosai was talking to uh, Ezekiel. Yahweh was talking to Ezekiel. And I looked and beheld a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, which is a chariot, and a fire enfolding itself. Um, and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst there, thereof as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire, also out of the midst thereof came like the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man, and everyone had four faces, and everyone had four wings. So these are angels, right? And their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Why would the Most High... Like, he's telling you that they're, they're so-called uh, jakes, right? They're not so-called jakes. They are jakes, right? Because even the angels look like... Uh, um, like the Father. Why would the Most High create angels that look like so-called white men, but then um, he's a so-called black man, but then his son is also a so-called white. That doesn't make any sense. And I just read to you, the Most High is not an author of confusion. Right? So I just wanted to read that. Because like, that was a, a vision. Um, so the last one. And it's very simple. Like, this just cuts up everything that these Christians say. Oh, he's not so-called black. Like, okay, then why? what does it say here then? Oh, it's not saying his hair is actually woolly. Then what does it say right there? It actually explains the texture of his hair. Right? But that's like, you know, just, that's why uh, <laughs> Apostle to Heart always says like, yeah, full cap is losing sleep. He's losing sleep because like, man, like you're, it's a losing battle. And it's not even a battle. It's more of a slaughter on his, uh, his side. He's getting slaughtered by the truth. John 14 and 9. Uh, yeah. Yahweh I saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. So we already had the description of what Yahweh looks like. It talked about the angels and what they look like, right? And then Yahweh is saying, If you've seen me, then you see the Father. Because he's saying that he looks like his dad. So if Yahweh is a so-called uh, black man, right? With brass skin burnt in the fire. And the furnace, what do you think the most high looks like? Yahweh. It's the same thing. Right? Right? It's the same thing. It's very simple. Anyways, that's it on that. <laughs> I don't need to keep going. There's not much more to say, but like, um, you know, if anyone ever says, like, oh, that's not true. He's not a so called white man. These are scriptures you can just pull out. Boom, 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 boom. Hit him with a, a combination, and, it, and the match is over. Right, so I hope this lesson was edifying to the hopeful elect. I'd like to close out by saying, Ka halal yahawa.
Baal Hashem, Yehoshai, Baal Hashem, Rekakodash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone and to the hopeful alike pushing his word and truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. Death and destruction to his wicked kingdom and two-thirds as well. Kwam Yasharala, Abad Babal, Shalom.